was like nature knew where I was headed and had decided to provide the perfect atmosphere. The road snaked through dry cornfields and hills covered in autumn trees. A thick fog turned familiar places into spooky landscapes. I couldn't think of a more fitting setting for the dark tale I was tracking down. The trip took me to Ragersville, Ohio, a small, quiet town nestled in the back roads of Amish country. But this sleepy little village has another name, Hangtown, and I was here to see the skeleton in the community closet, literally. 144 years ago, a man called Jeff Davis was lynched in this town, and it happened right here as you enter Ragersville. The story is like many tales of 19th century vigilante justice, but the difference here is that the town of Ragersville still has Davis's skeleton. They hung him in 1873, and uh, he was uh, he was in prison. Let's see here, one, two, three, four times. That was local historian Ray Hisrick speaking. Ray met me at the Ragersville Historical Society to show me Davis's bones, which now reside in the basement. Yeah. Basically what it is. There's Jeff. He's a, he was around five six, five seven, and when you stretch his bones out and everything, he's just about the right size. The story goes that Jeff Davis was a vagabond that came through Ragersville. Davis had been in legal trouble in Ragersville before, and folks said he was back in town to get even with the men who had put him behind bars. This time around, he assaulted several women and a little girl in this sleepy little town, and a warrant was put out for his arrest. Davis was apprehended and brought to Ragersville on the evening of July 26, 1873. The newspaper recorded what happened later that night. While Davis was in the justice's office, in the custody of the officers, and waiting for the witnesses to arrive, a crowd of unknown men from the country seized the prisoner with great violence, first blowing out the lights, then knocking him down with a poker, then, after firing seven shots into his body, dragging him from the office by a rope attached to his heels some distance through the town to a tree, and there hung him up by the neck until dead. Details on the lynching are sometimes unclear, because the residents of Ragersville were tight-lipped about the matter. Well, you know, way back, you couldn't get information from the older people. They, would, they still weren't giving out information. Really? No. They, uh... <laughs> Their grandparents were in on it, and they, they were always told, we don't talk about that. The old lady up the road, we tried to get her to uh, uh, tell the story. And she said, no, we don't talk about that. She was about 100. Her dad would have been in on it. Dad and grandpa, I think he was, her father was real young. And uh, she would not, would not talk about it. And then we have uh, documents here criminal documents of this township and there's when it comes to that date there's nothing there oh really yeah. just uh just left Blank. that one off the books huh Blank. yep uh. no one ever never went to jail no one was ever tried there was everybody was involved i think that the, the uh, law enforcement looked at it and said you know we're just there's no family here he had no family he was a troublemaker and they took care of him, huh? Over the course of the visit, I worked up the nerve to ask Ray a question I'd thought of while he'd been telling me the story. Do you have any ancestors that would have been around at, at that? I think uh, one of my, rel my great, grand great grandfather probably would have been, could have been, could have been, well, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to say, but they had just about everybody you know, all the head family members or whoever was in on this thing. They all got together and they said, listen, it's all of us or none. And so it was, you know, as they questioned people, they questioned everybody and no one knew anything, nothing. Now, how did the uh, skeleton come to be here? Well, so they threw him over the county line, buried him in a sawdust pile. 
And uh, so, when the, you know, they, they thought, well, I'd give it, just give him to Holmes County instead of Tuscarawas County. At that time, doctors could take a body that wasn't claimed and uh, use it for study. But uh, a Dr. Miller got him in Shanesville, uh, ended up over here in Regersville with a Dr. Peters, and he was, uh, I would say, in his doctor's offices to be Jeff Day was in his doctor's office probably about uh, 60 years or better. My dad said his kids they'd go by that old doctor's office, and you know it was haunted. They always they didn't want to go by there at night because they were afraid of that skeleton in there. And then his son uh, sold it to a fellow in Sugar Creek. He traded him for a box of cigars. Uh, they wanted this skeleton to hang in the woods to scare the coon hunters that came down. Uh, different guys come from the city wanted to coon hunt all the time and so he was going to put this skeleton. The fellow's wife said, no way. So he took it to an undertaker. And the undertaker kept it for years, gave it to his daughter who became a nurse. She used it for study. Her husband was a doctor. He used it for study. And I had talked to him years back and I said, boy, if you ever want to get rid of it, let us know. So she called one day and my dad and I, we went over and picked him up. If you're ever near Ragersville, I recommend stopping in and touring the museum with Ray. He's a great local historian and has a sense of humor well suited to the subject matter. But I always tell everybody that since that hanging, we really haven't had much, many problems here. For more stories like this, head on over to theweeklyholler.com and sign up for our free email newsletter. If you like folklore and thrilling tales, you'll love my new novel, Some Dark Holler, the first book in the Redemption of Ephraim Cutler series. Ephraim Cutler has blood on his hands and a hellhound on his trail. When his mother forces him to kill an innocent man, Ephraim Cutler's quiet life in the Appalachian Mountains is thrown into turmoil. With a bounty on his head, Ephraim flees to the hills and hollers where he discovers that his crime has drawn more than the law's attention. The devil's in town with his eye on Ephraim's soul. Desperate to escape, Ephraim is torn between two clashing figures, an outcast granny doctor rumored to be a witch and the local preacher. As the line between grim reality and the supernatural disappears, Death rides the ridgetops on a pale horse, and the devil's hound haunts the backwoods. Ephraim must decide who to trust, evade the hangman's noose, and find redemption.